Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, interesting evening today. Um, I came back in from dinner, and Tuesday is usually the day that I work on my um, my video for Wednesday for my Christian channel. And so, you know, the uh, video computer was still on, and so I and I use the same computer, and so I go to log out, and I'm just getting I/O errors. And so I turn the thing down eventually, turn it back on, and apparently my entire SSD is corrupted. So, yeah, these suck. <laughs> it was horrible. Um, this, drive is, uh, this drive is less than a year old. I want to say, Jan what is it, January, February? Uh, maybe it was even March. I forget exactly when I put this computer up. I'll have to go back and check my business receipts again. But, you know, I've had this drive for not even a year and it's completely fried right now um now i'm going to when i boot this computer off and boot it back on i'm going to attempt to uh, i'm going to attempt to go ahead and um boot load it in again and see if i can fix the partition but as of right now the last time i attempted to, to put this into the system it will not even it's like not even running at all and so um, there is supposedly a three-year warranty on these. So I'm going to get a hold of uh, SanDisk and um, let you guys know what happens when they get back in contact with me. Um, but, and understand that this drive, now, what abuse does this drive get? Well, it records videos. And so there's a lot of recording, you know, gigabyte files, delete, record, delete, record, delete. You get that going on it. And obviously these have a certain amount of, of read write cycles but at the same time it should be a lot more durable than just to do that you know once a day I mean not even once a day because a lot of times I'm live streaming and I don't even record my live streams I just live stream them and so um, what happens um, basically in, in this computer and it's not like I have one computer around here it's this computer is only dedicated to recording video I don't use this for anything else there is no email there is nothing on here except recording videos streaming content creation stuff so a little bit of graphic design things like that and so um, she's dead Jim <laughs> I'm going to go in tomorrow and buy a spinny hard drive. Joe Collins is right. These suck. Um, and, you know, and the sad reality is SSDs are coming in everything, but they do have a limited read-write. Now, usually what happens is the write dies before the read, so you can copy it. And um, what's apparently what happened is there was a corruption in the mounting system, and so the drive will not even mount. And so what do you do when you encounter that problem? So I'm kind of, uh, I have, I, I have successfully recovered every bit of data off of this and hopefully I will have time tonight still to uh, work on my Christian video. What I'm go actually going to do is report both user accounts onto my Debian system. You can see I'm running my Linux Mint KDE back behind me. I've taken my Debian system over here. I'm going to um, recreate the um, recreate the users over here so I'll have multiple users on this drive and then I'm gonna port over all the data and use that as in the interim uh, so hopefully you have this back up and running by the for live streaming on on Friday and who knows when I'll buy a larger drive and things like that um, but what how do you get your data off a drive in this circumstance where this drive will not mount and that was the problem basically I boot up the computer you know uh, what's the error message? You know, it's just the standard error message, you know, non-system disk or disk error, press any key and, you know, try again. And so what do you do? Well, what I decided that I was going to do is um, uh, you want to keep around some tools if you are involved in the computer tech world. So um, what I have here are... I got a nice actively cooled external hard drive enclosure. I bought this thing, I want to say I bought this in 2008-ish or so. Um, and um, I actually bought it specifically because I had a laptop hard drive I was using and you could use, um, getting one for a standard size hard drive is very effective because uh, you can put a laptop and a basic hard drive in there. But you'll see I have this guy taped down because this thing traditionally has only been used for me for laptop hard drives. 
And so basically you just mount your uh, drive over here and you have an external SATA, you have a USB um, or and you have your power, plug in the drive, click it on, and that will give you an external hard drive enclosure, which will turn any uh, internal hard drive into an external hard drive. So you want to keep one of these guys around. Um, excellent for data recovery, excellent for all that other fun stuff. So what you do is I plugged that guy in and then first I attempted to mount the file system on my Linux Mint computer. That was not going to work. And so what I happened to do here, doo -doo 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 -doo, let me go ahead and transition that. There we are. So what I ended up doing here is first you put the drive in. Now, like I said, it's not even being recognized anymore. Um, but what I did is um, you put it in and it was originally recognized. So if you come up here to the menu, and this is just the disks utility. So on Linux Mint, just type in disks. Um, same thing on Ubuntu, any Ubuntu type system. So this is basically your disk manager. You come up here and then you can create a disk image. And so I created an entire disk image of this guy and I'm very glad that's the very first step you do because now this thing's not even working at all. Um, I'll try it again maybe in the morning. I'm not going to mess with it anymore tonight. I'm already postponed all of my work this afternoon for tonight and now it's 1 a.m. and I'm still not getting anything done <laughs> and I probably won't but you create a system uh, a system disk and the problem is you cannot mount that directly uh, because what you need to do is you need um, you need to grab some some information here and so uh, what I did is you have to take your your image. Of course, I changed the image to mint.img just because it was easier to work with. Then you need to run an F disk, and this is going to give you your information. So you need to know your amount of sectors. Um, you need to know your images. So this disk has three partitions on it. So this is your mounting partition. Now the problem with this is somewhere here in partition two, there is a corruption in here that is preventing the disk from being able to mount. That seems to be what the problem is. Now I should be able to, to run a, uh, um, a fixed disk on this, but it's not even running for me right now. So like I said, I'll try that again, you know, Maybe today I'll have to reboot everything, get all that figured out. Um, but uh, the first one is your boot partition. The second is my actual data partition. And the third is a swap partition. And um, so you have that going there. And then what you need to do is the first thing I did is I created a folder just on the desktop that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to mount this to. And then what you have to do is typing in this command here, you'll see. And of course, I put the slash mint fold in there. I'm not sure why, but uh, this one here. So it did, told me that didn't exist. You had to do it without the slash. So basically what I did here is you have to mount this because the, the loop device, when you drop these loop devices in, then um, you will see that they are listed as read only. So the top one here, or the, the second one down here, is actually this guy here with all these partitions. This third one is actually just the mounted partition. So this guy here, I do have that full ability to read write. And so what you need to do is you have to run this F disk so you can grab your sectors, your start region, because what you have to do is you have to mount your loop option, um, taking into account the starting sector and the size of the sectors. Um, so what you do is you just run this command sudo mount uh, dash o loop. You want to offset it and here you could actually run this math but the command that I had had uh, seen online it just had all of this in here as a variable. So you just choose the start sector for the partition you want to mount multiply this over here by the sector size which is up here this is the image and this is where I'm mounting it to. Like I said, I just dropped this directly onto the desktop. Now, once you get into there, once that mounted, of course, um, this is where it mounted to. And all I effectively need from here is my two home directories. 
uh, this guy here. In fact, what I really what I needed is I needed these two raw files because I record I record my sermon series, my Bible study series, a couple weeks in advance, and so I I generally always have one or two of these in queue for next week. And this is what I did not want to have to redo is is uh, redo the the lessons. And so I grabbed those. The other things, of course, that that I will have have grabbed from within here is the hidden files. Um, hopefully they'll be here um, because the hidden files are going to contain things like my um, uh, things like my. Oh, where's it at? Hello, where are you? Uh, Caden Live is what I was looking for. I have to double check, make sure I can bring in my Caden Live settings because um, yeah, I'll have to do just double check where they are. It might be in here. Eh, I'll find them. I'll have to, I might have to look that up. But um, you know, I, I have custom themes built for Caden Live and and other things like that. I want to make sure I bring all of those settings in with me as I'm as I'm working with these and also my uh, my my files from my documents, um, things like that. And so basically I want to make sure that, that I have all that information. And now what you'll notice is I'm in elevated privileges in two folders. So this one here is basically I created another folder here. So um, this is actual, actually this exact same files that I had over here. I had to put elevated privileges on both of these because mounting these guys out with system files in other people's user files, you just absolutely need root permissions to take those from anywhere and to put those from anywhere. So now what I have is I was able to get in here. I started with making an, an image on the disk. And so with the image on my disk, I'm able then to mount the image on the disk, uh, mounting that into a specific folder. So now within here, come in, grab the two home directories that I have, and I'll just go online here and double check where the location of my, um, uh, where the location of my um, uh, Caden Live settings are. I just don't, for, don't remember where all those are. Make sure I have all of those with me, port all those back over, and then, um, then what we should be able to do then is uh, not skip a beat, hopefully, is what the goal is going to be. Uh, but I just want to go ahead, uh, you know, obviously if you guessed there's not going to be a live, uh, live uh, stream today because I'm in, probably in the process still of fixing this. But I did want to show you how you recover the data. Now, again, I mean, I have a pretty good data strategy, but I don't back up every bit of my data every single day. It just happened that, um, you know, this time I, I didn't happen to have that, but yeah, I got everything. I didn't lose anything, even though my my uh, crappy SSD here died on me. I'll be switching to mechanical hard drives again because, you know, this is just my first foray into it. In fact, I think the only other computer I had, um, where are you? There it is. I have too many m mice on my desk here. Uh, this guy here is also running on an SSD. Now this one I've had for, I don't know, about a year or so. It was only running Kodi. Um, so it's, It'll be interesting to see if this one corrupts and dies on me sometime soon too. But I will be getting a hold of SanDisk, um, sending that guy back, and uh, maybe saying, you know, just give me a refund. I don't think I want to play with SSDs anytime in the future. Um, but I don't know. That's my thought. Uh, regardless, uh, this is how you go ahead and get your data off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to boot up my Debian computer, uh, create two new user accounts, drop those home folders into here, and make any other tweaks that I might need to make. So that will be my fun task for the rest of the night. Um, hope this helped you just in case you happen to have some uh, lost data. And uh, this will give you some tips as to what you might do. And again, the problem seems to be that the data partition is not mountable anymore. And um, so we'll see if that, uh, that resolves it. So thanks for watching, folks. And um, we will... Uh, catch you. Hopefully I'll have this back up and running by Friday. Well, we'll see. <laughs> if not, I'll just use this computer until then. So thanks for watching, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening.